Okay, welcome back to uh, episode three, I think we're at. So um, in this one, I thought we'd just go back over some of the stuff I mentioned in the first one, uh, where we, I was talking about some of the products I've been buying. Um, now I've had a chance to, oh, and been sent, I must say that. Um, so uh, I've had a chance to use some of them. So I thought we could just run through. Um, and that links into part of this week's sort of big, um, well, release, I suppose. Uh, on on Thursday, I've got a uh, rather long, sort of half an hour um, weathering demonstration. Uh, he hesitate to use the word tutorial, so we're calling it a demonstration of just how I've used some of these ammo products that I was sent uh, from Ammo uh, by MIG uh, Jimenez. So, uh, this aircraft here is now complete. This is the 109 that we've been seeing a little bit, uh, the weekend edition from Edward. We've seen in a, a little bit of these um, episodes, and uh, that's now complete. There's also a build video of that coming up, a little bit um, different to the usual one, uh, in the fact that uh, it's more a sort of mix of uh, video and pictures, and uh, trying to use the editing software a little bit more. So it's just a little bit different. So hopefully you'll enjoy that, and that will be coming later on in the week. Uh, so as I say, this one is now completed. Um, it was all fully sprayed with uh, lacquer paints, um, and that's also one of the things I've, I have been using is this rapid thinner for the matte paints. So uh, where I've used um, uh, the Mr. Color paints on this, I actually thin that with the rapid thinner, and I've been trialing it on a, another aircraft that we'll see in a minute uh, with some of the Tamiya range, the XF range, and I'm finding it, it it's much better for those sort of flat colours than uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner, which is what they say. It flashes off a lot better, and I'm finding that the certainly with the Tamiya flat range, so that's the XF range, that um, they're drying a lot quicker um, and a lot tougher. I was finding with Mr. Leveling Thinner, they go down lovely, but they, they've got this sort of, um, not tackiness, they're not sort of sticky while you're, you're you know, once it's dry, it's dry, but it's got this sort of sheen to it. It, it didn't look, well, it doesn't look like it does when you put this rapid thinner on. Um, I would say the drying time is sort of halved. I mean, you know, you can pick it up. Usually I like to leave the Tamiya about an hour because you tend to get fingerprints in it. Um, that's with leveling thinner. Um, but with this one, rapid thinner, I'm sure there's other thinners, I'm just discussing this rapid thinner. Um, I found that it, it actually went off a, a little bit quicker and it was a lot tougher to, to use. So um, I, from my point of view, I'm going to carry on um, using it and then probably we'll have a look in one of the later episodes to come. Actually do a little demonstration on it, maybe use some spoons or something. Because I'd want to uh, i like to do a comparison with three new uh, German tank colours. So you've got a new version of dark yellow, dark green, dark or red brown. Uh, so I was thinking if we got some spoons out, trusty old plastic spoons, and if we sprayed the free with the new ones and the free with the old ones, and then we can see, and then I could possibly do some um, squiggling camouflage pattern on, on one of them as well, so you can sort of see the difference. So that's something I'm thinking of um, uh, coming up soon, so we'll use some of the rapid thinner for that. So that's just an update on that one. Also been using this um, finishing surfacer. Now that was used on this as well. Couple things from that. Again, I used the rapid thinner, and it was literally by the time I I'd blown through the airbrush and got that cleaned, uh, it was it was totally touch dry. It was no problem. However, for the first time in a very long time of uh, any of my modelling, after spraying the lacquers on and unmasking, the paint was peeling up in places. I've never had that before, and I don't usually use a primer. And if I do. I usually use uh, one of the flat colours from Tamiya, so something like XF19, just a neutral grey. I find that bites into the plastic a bit better, uh, certainly with the MRPs for instance, uh, some of the Mr. Colour lacquers, you can mix it a bit thicker so it's not a problem. So just a word of warning, I can't blame this for that, but uh, this is the Mr. Hobby Finishing Surfer 1500 grey. I'm just saying uh, that it did lift, and there was nothing wrong with it. It, was, it wasn't like it was greasy or anything, because so, it was doing it in different places. So that's something I'm going to look at in the future, I think, and just sort of be aware of. If I'm going to go into primers, then I, I might need to think about uh, prepping the surface a little bit more than I usually do. So that's it regarding these. Um, we've also got the Tamiya lacquer paint as well, and I have tried a little bit of that. And I must say, I, I mean, I use the Mr. Color range and I use the MRP range. This smells a bit different, feels a bit different when you're spraying it, but it is on the face of it. I haven't done extensive trials with it yet. I haven't used it enough, but it is um, seems exceptional stuff from uh, my personal point of view so far. So I'm going to keep having a look at that. And um, again, when we talk about doing a sort of demonstration, I might uh, chuck some of these lacquer paints in there from Tamiya as well, and we can have a good go at them. So as far as this weathering demonstration that's coming up, um, I obviously talk about this a lot 
uh, these products a lot in that demonstration, but I thought it was just worth making a point that um, I've used some of these in the past. I haven't used the oil brusher, um, but I, I have used the panel liners and I've got some of um, the pre-mix washes as well. And uh, they are very good, I must admit, they, they do have a use. So they're enamel based um, and they're pre-thinned and it's, it's really the colour match that you're sort of buying into um, because they are very, very good. They've got the descriptions, you've got storm grey, neutral brown and things like stone grey for black, for instance, is obviously it mix a little bit of a sort of dark brown colour, I guess, to cut through the black a bit better. Um, and using all of these together, I found them really, really great. So the oil brushes, um, as I mentioned before, we'll, we'll show you again, it's like a sort of mascara type bottle with a brush on the end. Now, I chose to uh, use that brush just to decant into a palette. I was actually using this one, still got some of the colour on it. And then filling that with the odourless oil thinners. And that cut through this lovely. Now I haven't used things like um, the, the sort of, uh, there's wilder oils and um, Abtai Lung oils uh, which are specifically designed for sort of modelling. I haven't used those but what I've heard of about them is that you know you can use the best artist oils but these things are really great and designed for what we're doing and there's, there's different reasons for why they're good. I would be expecting them to be like this because these were quite different. I like to use my artist oils and um, I use them all the time, that's mainly how I do weathering and these were quite a step above in the quality of the oil, how it was in the palette and how it mixed and how clean it was and how then it approached, uh, how the approach to the model then, um, it, how it was represented when it was on the wing. I just found it really really useful and then once I'd gone on, as you'll see in the um, in the video, as I say in the demo, um, at, once I'd done that, I then cut through those uh, different colours that I'd used with the oils with the panel line washers, and it was just it, it just came alive, and it was so simple in um, sort of an evening's work. This whole thing was weathered, top and bottom, both sides, using the pigments as well um, to give a bit of kick back off the tyres and uh, a bit of dirt in the wheel well, and we were done. So for a simple weathering project, I mean they're they're just so easy, straight out of the bottle. So um, stay tuned to the channel because like I said, that's uh, that's due to be up on Thursday. So um, if you want to see more on that, look, keep an eye out for it and uh, let me know your thoughts. So uh, final update on this kit. It's been the ongoing saga, but um, I thought uh, fair dues, I thought I'd give uh, Edward the, the shout out that, that, you know, they've come good. So here we are, we've got the errata sheet now that's uh, being sent out for the Legion Condor boxing of their BF109 E1 stroke three in uh, one thirty second scale and here you can see it's quite apparent that these are the roundels that come in the kit this is the errata sheet that's the correct scale you've got 148 roundels here on the sheet and now they're sending out the one thirty second. so all you've got to do is just contact them through the support page like i said in the last video just got them on the bench here now so you can actually see what you get and uh, you should be you should be good to go also got a progress report on the Pfizer Storch uh, so this is one thirty fifth scale and this is the TriStar or um Hobby Boss re-release of this kit and as you can see paint is on, we're unmasked and uh, this follows on from the video from last week where we were talking about uh, masking. Here we can see with the masks off there's the 464 that was uh, printed on the Cricut. Also got the crosses on the uh, rear there so they're all unmasked, crosses on the wing. This is all reverse masking so if you weren't watching the video that's just we put down the colour so the white goes down first mask the area and then over spray with the top coat which in this instance is a green. This is meant to be ROM61 um, so I've opted just to use Tamiya straight out of the um, bottle and I've used their XF81. Now it's not perfect, it's certainly not massively close to um, say MRP's uh, ROM71 which is a little bit darker but I've decided not to worry too much about that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I find that the um, MRP, I don't like using them on large uh, areas because they take a very long time to go down. Um, they're very thin so they can show up a few problems with these seams. Uh, down here for instance, they can cut, sort of come back whereas I find like the Tamiya um, flat colours have a kind of micro filler ability to them so any tiny little um, imperfections where you've got a bit of a 
I had a bit here it was it was you could see that I'd sanded it and it was a little bit I hadn't sort of primed it that well uh, well then they they just hide a few sins so I don't mind um, using them and also the colors good enough uh, you know we're in Spain there's a perfectly good excuse for the color to be a little bit off obviously got fading as well and we can weather it down quite dark as well so I'm, I'm reason I'm very happy with it uh, it's no problem and uh, made a nice alternative uh, we've got underneath is the uh, other slight cocker which actually is gone in my favor this is mr colors rom 76 oh no it's the 78 so the very late war um blue color it's meant to be 65 i just picked the wrong bottle it was meant to be this one here 115 from mr color <laughs> i just picked the incredibly close and incredibly similar colour and even when it's on the model it's actually surprising I picked 118 off the shelf and as you can see my problem uh, you know you tell me the difference I'm not sure if that shows up on camera but uh, my personal view is that this is actually probably a better version of the ROM 65 than what uh, their version is and it, it doesn't look anything like 78 78 should be quite pale I would have thought so Anyway, that sort of worked out just about, so um, I'm glad of that because I'd actually unmasked it by the time I'd realised and it, it was a, quite a pain to get all of this masked up. Uh, so overall, this isn't. This was never going to be an award winner. This is actually more of a table filler, if I'm honest. It's I had um, the Hasegawa 132nd version and then realised that it wasn't actually the correct version, nor could I make the correct version because it had the different windows back here. So I sold that and I got this one just in place. So... Um, I'm reasonably happy the way it's coming on. We're just now into the weathering. We're completely unmasked. The glazing has uh, survived the masking a little bit. Tiny bit of overspray here and there, but I can um, work it out. So this one has been filmed. It's quite an in-depth build video, so I've got all parts of it the whole way through. And we've obviously had the uh, seatbelt demonstration out of this and a few other things. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. Not sure whether that will be up this week or next week, but it really isn't very far away. So as soon as I get the oils out for a project, this one will get weathered up and um, we'll be ready to go. So lastly for this one, it's a bit of a shorter um, one this week because I've got the large video coming up on Thursday, so that's where I've put half an hour into it. Um, I'm reasonably happy with it, quite um, quite happy how it's come out, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, and you'll <laughs> allow me for giving you a shorter uh, shorter episode this week. Next up with you we've got a review, um, and this is just this uh, nice reboxing from Edward of their uh, well... Uh, well-known um, Hellcat series in 172nd. They've obviously got it in 148th as well. It's a very nice kit. Uh, this is just a profit pack edition. I, that I did get a whole load of stuff from Creative Models. They have a weekly uh, discount on Thursdays. Always worth checking out. Um, and these were a very, very good price. This was 10.49. Now, for a brand new sort of profit pack kit, that's a pretty good price. And I like to have some of these in the stash just when I feel like building something different. It's nice to grab it. No, it's all in the box. You don't have to worry about masking canopies, seat belts, none of that. It's all in there. So when you can get prices like that, um, it's it's uh, time to go for it. So I did go a little bit uh, wild and had, um, what is that, five Edward kits I had delivered. So um, you can look forward to some reviews of uh, Edward, <laughs> Edward kits coming up. For now, um, th this one, uh, like I said, will be with you shortly. So it's a really nice kit. Um, as I say, you know they've been around quite a lot, but it's just nice to see how Edward have packed this one up for this release. Um, I actually thought the decals were extremely good on this because because you've got the different stars for each option. You you know you've got the chance to actually use these on a few other. You know you could buy the weekend editions, for instance, and still do some of these schemes because um, you're using different roundels even for the wings. So uh, that was nice. That's often a problem, like where they do um, weekend editions or well they come with decals, but where they do uh, you can buy the over trees and stuff to reuse their decals. That's all well and good, but when you've got something like this and you've used the crosses. Uh, you know, you've got to then try and source the crosses. So it's always nice when uh, we've got something like this. So we've got some nice colourful schemes. It's the earlier schemes uh, where you've got the three colours. So it's not just glossy sea blue right over. It's usually intermediate blue, white underside and glossy sea blue on top. So that's quite nice. I'm particularly taken with this one with the chequered nose there. Or, well, it's not chequered, but it's. I suppose it nearly is. Um, so, yes. Look forward to this one, um, and again, you know, stay tuned to Creative Hobbies because it's worth checking out their weekly sales. We can always do with another model kit for the stash. 
So there we are with another um, weekly show. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this one and it's given you a nice um, idea for what's coming on the channel later on. Like I've mentioned for a third time, highlight of this week is the uh, oil brushes and the build video for the 109. So hopefully that uh, will bring you some nice content and you'll all enjoy that. And I look forward to some feedback in the comments of those videos. Uh, next week we're going to be really, uh, it's really starting to get the Telford time off of the uh, camera. So I know we're nearly still a couple months out, but... Uh, I've really got to start cracking on with some builds because uh, we, we want that 109E, uh, the Condor Legion one, where I've got those new decals. We need that on the table, plus a couple others. Uh, I've got that Polycarp off. We've got that I-16 from uh, ICM in 132nd scale, the Type 10. That one's due to be build, built, so um, I'm going to be doing quite a lot on and off the camera, so stay tuned and we'll um, start having a look at some of the projects in the rundown to Telford from sort of next week onwards. And also we're going to be looking at some of those paints. So until the next time, stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and that will give you notifications for when new videos are coming up and it will be in your, uh, on your YouTube feed so you'll be able to stay tuned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.